hands up. Get your hands up. That's what he's treating. That's how he's treating a stranded citizen. These are the shocking moment when a corrupt cop was finally taken to the cleaners in the courtroom. Massive kudos to these judges for handing out appropriate sentences for these pigs. Particularly the officer in the last case made a devastating mistake. <laughs> watch until the end as the atrocities of these evil cops are unfolded. I hereby sentence Mr. Raja to 25 years in the Department of Corrections. That is as a minimum mandatory, which was required that he serve day for day. In October 2015, musician Corey Jones was waiting on the side of the road for help after his truck broke down. That is when Officer Newman Raja arrived in plain clothes and did the unthinkable. All this because Corey Jones, undeniably a black man, was on the side of the road waiting for a tow truck. Now, that's not accurate. It's not because Corey Jones was sitting there waiting for a tow truck. It's because that defendant right there chose to refuse to act like any reasonable law enforcement officer approaching a stranded citizen in help. That is why Corey Jones died that evening. Ford Jones struck three times in total and died on the spot. Noman Raja was on undercover operation during the time and didn't even need to arrive there to intimidate the poor victim. He recklessly created a situation which could only be expected to result in somebody being seriously injured or killed. And all the evidence is going to show three things at the end of this trial. It's going to show that that defendant shot and Corey Jones, it's going to show that he at no time acted like a law enforcement officer, and it's going to show that he is guilty as charged of manslaughter and attempted first degree murder with a firearm. The attorney was doing a brilliant job and made sure to expose Raja's corrupt face in front of the whole world. Corey Jones was doing nothing except waiting for help on the side of the road because his SUV broke down. And one of the few people that should have unquestionably been there to assist him on the side of that road did exactly the opposite. Instead of being Corey Jones's saving grace, he was his angel of death. It was later revealed that Raja never displayed his badge for Corey Jones, who didn't even know by the end that he had been murdered by a police officer who was actually there swearing to protect the public. The evidence will show that there's no way Corey Jones knew, even at the time that he was running, fleeing from the back of his vehicle, running into the dark, seeking cover, laying there on the ground, dying, breathing his last breath. No way that he knew that the person that actually shot and killed him was a law enforcement officer. But see, unfortunately for Corey Jones, his bad luck was turning much worse. Because unknown to him, that defendant was on duty. See, he was a police officer at that time in the Palm Beach Jarvis Police Department. He was working in detail, a plain clothes detail where he was supposed to surveil neighborhoods, looking for car burglars, and if he saw anything, he's supposed to call up marked units to come and take care of the issue. Stay tuned as things were about to get even worse for the defendant who is having the worst verbal beating of his life. He cuts right in front of Corey Jones's SUVs as his partner. He positions himself diagonally, front end to front end of Corey Jones's vehicle, with their bumpers mere feet apart in an unmarked van with zero indication whatsoever that he's a law enforcement officer at three o'clock in the morning on a Saturday turn into Sunday. That's what he chose to do. He runs around the front of that van and immediately becomes confrontational with Corey Jones. As the attorney exposed Raja's hideous actions, he stood remorseless, showing no emotions whatsoever. Now, Corey Jones, he's got an expensive jump. He goes into not the nicest parts of Delray Beach for his job. So he did what any lawful American can do. He purchased a firearm. 
he didn't even pull out the badge, which was in his wallet, in his back pocket, to show to Corey Jones. Much less put on that vest that said police, or even had his radio or his gun. There's nothing but an overly aggressive and immediately hostile attitude. You hear it for yourselves. You make the decision. You're the judges of the credibility of everybody, including him. Because you will hear from him. Raja later lied, claiming he had identified himself as a cop and that Corey had tried to attack him. However, Corey had dialed a number during the incident and the call recording proved to be the officer's downfall, clearly showing that he never identified himself as a police officer. Yeah, I'm good. Really? That's what he's saying. That's not how an officer talks to a citizen if they're talking to one on the side of the road. But that's how he spoke to what he saw with Corey Jones on the side of that road. And when Corey Jones laughs and says, yeah, now he starts saying even more hostile. Get your hands up. Get your hands up. That's what he's treating. That's how he's treating a stranded citizen. Immediately within seconds, that's what he's saying. You know, profane orders being shouted at a time when a guy is sitting with a broken down car. It is truly terrifying to even imagine the pain he must have felt. He was gunned down by the one who should have helped him pick car. Once again, get your effing hands up. Drop. Three shots. Corey's running away. He's already retreating behind his vehicle. His weapon shows him three shots. He chose to fire out of that gun because of the way that he acted. The attorney made groundbreak point, highlighting how Raja showed no regard for the victim, framing the incident as nothing less than an assassination. He made a decision to shoot first and ask questions later. That was his decision. But see, this isn't the end of the story. Because now Corey Jones is running for his life. He is running for the cover of darkness. He's thrown down the gun already that he had in his hand that was meant to protect him. And he got 10 seconds. Because he didn't stop shooting. No, he kept shooting. But you got 10 seconds. That doesn't sound like a long time. But when you sit there and you look at that clock and you hear those seconds tick away, and you consider that Corey Jones is running for his life after being shot at on the side of the road, that's forever. 10 seconds between the third and the fourth shot. It also highlights how often police misuse officer safety as a justification, leading to some of the worst atrocities committed in his name. Finally do what he is supposed to do as a law enforcement officer. But that's not what the evidence is gonna show he did. It's going to show his recklessness. This absolute reckless behavior from the start is now changing. Before getting much needed assistance, if he was truly in fear of his life, well, he needs to call a coward. 30 seconds. Corey Jones is dead, and it's by the culpable negligence or act of that defendant. And he's going to explain to you, the judge will tell you what culpable negligence means. He's going to say it means a course of conduct showing a reckless disregard for human life or the safety of other persons exposed to its dangerous effects of conscious indifference to the consequences. Finally, after an emotional and compelling statement from the prosecutor, the jury reached a verdict. Took over 3,000 pages of evidence proved the officer was in the wrong. The prosecutor's words likely did more damage than any evidence could. We, the jury, find as follows. As to count one, we find a defendant guilty of manslaughter while armed with a firearm as charged in the information. As to count two, we find a defendant guilty of attempted first degree murder as charged in the information. If you find a defendant guilty of attempted first degree murder, you must next answer the following questions. 
Did the state prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant actually possessed a firearm? Yes. Did the state prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant actually discharged a firearm? Yes. Did the state prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant in discharging the firearm actually caused great bodily harm or death to Corey L. Jones? Yes. Finally, the moment of truth arrived. Evil killer cop was finally sent. On count one, I hereby sentence him uh, to 25 years in the Department of Corrections. And on count two, I hereby sentence Mr. Raja to 25 years in the Department of Corrections. That is as a minimum mandatory, which will require that he serve day for day. Those sentences will run concurrent. Raja was sentenced to 25 years in prison. He is currently serving his sentence. Additionally, Corey's family filed a lawsuit against City, resulting in a $2 million settlement. This case shows just how easily a police officer can destroy his career and his city. Next, we have another tyrant cop. One wrong decision completely changed the lives of many. <laughs> On January 18, 2019, Officer Sanchez pulled over Gregory Griffin for a traffic stop. Little did anyone know, soon turned into a tragedy. Huh? Turn off the car. What? Turn off the car. What? Sir, turn off the vehicle. Turn off the vehicle, sir. Turn it off. What? Uh, Turn off the car and roll down the window. Open the door. Give me that other unit. Open the window. Open the door. What's up? I got a 646. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Hands. Hands on the wheel. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. The female officer was intimidatory and rude from the beginning. Just when things seemed to be a fair bit under control, Griffin made the wrong move. S hands on the wheel. Come on, turn the car off. Turn the car off. Be advised, the vehicle took off. Thomas in Pennsylvania. Zulu 21 Hotel, I mean Kilo. you just saw shooting directly at the fleeing car was Giovanni Crespo, a young Newark police officer who was about to make the biggest mistake of his life. miles in the streets of Newark as the officers couldn't stop the idiot driver. That is when Officer Crespo made a decision that would continue to haunt him for the rest of his life. <laughs> Crespo fired a total of eight bullets at the car in three intervals. He eventually struck the driver, Griffin, killing him on the spot. And one of the bullets also hit the passenger, leaving them critically injured. Did you shoot? No, I didn't shoot. Who shot? Who shot? Crespo. Crespo shot. Crespo. Crespo shot. <sighs> no, we sh they shot. Crespo shot. And they're, they're gone. They're gone. Who's dead? No, no, he just pulled off on me. Pennsylvania and Thomas. Pennsylvania and Thomas is where I pulled them over. No. Was that a motor vehicle stop? Yes. No, motor vehicle stop. I pulled them over. 
Okay. Right, Who you with? By myself. Okay. Everyone on the scene knew that Crespo made a huge blunder. It was only a matter of time before he was charged for the murder. Well, I, the car going down Pennsylvania. It was going way too fast. So I did you, have, you you pulled it over as a 521? Pulled or you it had... over as a traffic stop. Okay. Just as a traffic stop. Just because he was going too fast. Okay. I got behind him on Pennsylvania and Thomas at the red light. I was waiting for the light to turn green. I thought he was going to pull over right on Pennsylvania. He kept going down Thomas right on that little curb on Thomas. Pulled over right in front of the church. I got out, told him to turn off the car. He keeps telling me, why? Why do I need to turn off the car? So I'm like, turn off the car, turn off the car. So I go over 646. I got a man with a gun. The, the Delta unit puts up Moss and his partner. So I tell him he's got a gun. So they're like, Val, open, get him out. I go to open the door. The door doesn't open, so I go in to open it from the inside, and he takes off. Where's your car? 503. I'm just driving 503. All right, let's see the car. Yeah. Crespo was eventually claimed to have broken the departmental's policies, and he was charged with aggravated manslaughter, aggravated assault, and official misconduct. Case went to trial, and after a lengthy argument, his mother pleaded to the judge for a lighter sentence. When I got to your mind, I made a to his mom that Giovanni was gonna be the best that he could be and she wanted me to raise him the right way and I did my best I would just like to apologize <coughs> for, the, for the event that occurred <coughs> to the victims to my family that I put through, everybody that been through, that been going through hard times because of this. I took a chance at a job where it's life or death every day. And the thin blue line really is just the line. Ultimately, Crespo was found guilty and was sentenced to 27 years in prison. Good behavior, he would only be spending 23. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. Today we saw cases where some of the worst cops were given long life sentences. Both of these evil murderers made the worst possible decisions of their lives and ultimately caused their own life to come crashing down. This video does give a sense of relief that there is still some justice, which makes sure to hold these tyrants accountable for the heinous crimes that they committed. If you believe in just being served, please support us by liking this video. Also, if you enjoyed this video, watch the time this cop made a stunning discovery while searching a killer's home. Can we get an officer right here with me? My husband just shot himself. Stop! 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 Stop!